Hello guys, Solitaire Gaming here, back with another part of Killer Queen. Let's get started. The one who broke the ice was the woman who suggested that they should exchange information in the first place. <laughs> the reply came from the young man who talked to Suichi earlier. Despite the cautious look in his eyes, it almost seems as if he thought all this was somewhat, somewhat amusing. He then broke out into a vulgar grin. A company employee with that attitude and hoodlum outfit, I highly doubt it. As which he thought this, the young man named Takezuki Tezuka looks right at him. Are you talking to me? So, Takazuki gestured to his surroundings as he, said, as he said this. There are still three girls and one boy. I haven't spoke yet. They're all rattled down, clearly still reeling from the shock. I'm. But before he could continue, the boy sitting in front of him stood up. Oh, that's a boy? Tazuki sarcastically apologized to the boy making fun of him all the while. The boy blushed as he shouted that. Oh, wow, that's a boy? But Tazuki didn't let up his teasing and only provoked him further. The boy called Nagi Sawa was successfully hooked by it as he looked about ready to kill Tezuki on the spot. Well, the woman who kept quiet up until then scolded Tezuki. Judging from the clothes she wore that were a common sight in any city, she seemed to be seemed to be some sort of receptionist. てめえは。ふみかよ。力士は Fumiko was trying to get the conversation back on track. Perhaps Tezuka had caught on to this and as he finally stopped talking. <laughs> Fumika turned the group's attention back to Suichi. I'm Suichi Mitsurugi, a student. This girl is Sakumi Himehagi. Suichi went ahead and introduced himself and Sakumi to the group. Since Sakumi was still trembling, he she she was in no condition to do her herself. No, we just met a few minutes ago, but she seems to be still be, be recovering from shock. Fumika then looked at Sakumi with a bear smile. Sakumi looked up and nodded very briefly. Everyone then turned to the last person. Since her clothes were fairly normal, it was difficult to tell what she did. All they knew was that she was a woman and she was young. Oh wow. She looks like an assassin or something. Whoa. A girl named Rika Yahata, Yahata turned aside everyone's stairs effortlessly and introduced herself in a low voice. Once everyone finished introducing themselves, Tezuka immediately turned back to a woman he knew known as Goda. For a moment, she looked irritated by the name he called her, but shrugged it off and started talking. So, ね。まず、みんなの皿割れてきた経緯を知りたいの。そんな問題でどうする? <laughs> Our PDAs. Koda nodded. 
この PDA 各人でそれぞれ内容が違うみたいなのよ No I didn't Are you serious? ええ昨日のところの地図だけは多分同じなんだろうけどルールと解除条件のところに書かれているのは違うことのようなのそういえばルールの最初にそんなことが書いてあったようなフミカ took a PDA out of her pocket and turned it on こういう状況だからせめてルールだけはすべて把握したいと思うのよ何をしたらこの首輪が吹き飛ぶのか知らずにいて首が飛ぶのはごめんだわああそいつには賛成だよおばさんそうありがとう Thus they began exchanging information First they, talk, they each talked about how they'd been grabbed but all their stories were similar Their memories were cut off when they were in a place Avoid people, and when, they're, when they came to, they were in a room with a collar around their necks and PDA close by. The next piece of information they exchanged were their individual rules as outlined in their corresponding PDAs. Each PDA had four of nine rules recorded on it. Everyone's PDA has rules one or two on them. Two of, out of the seven remaining rules were randomly assigned to them, bringing this number up to four. Fortunately, all seven had the nine rules together. Said the, said the rules were as follows. One, all players have explosive collars attached to their necks. Players who have fulfilled their release conditions can remove the collar by inserting their PEAs into the connector on the collar. A player attempts to connect to a PEA before fulfilling their release conditions. The collar will detonate 15 seconds later. Two, each player will be given four out of nine rules. Players will be assigned rules one and two and then random two ones a random one from three and nine assembling three to four players into a group should be enough to reveal all nine rules three there are 13 pdas in all each pda has a different release condition stored in it each player should sign one specific pda at the start of the game just as rule one applies your pda release condition applies to you alone it's impossible to remove your call of someone else's pda if you attempt this your call would detonate so if you can remove the caller only with the pda you were given at the very start of the game. Four, in addition to the 13 normal PDAs distributed at the start, there's an additional one, the Joker. Unlike normal PDAs, this one is randomly assigned to one of the, to one of the participants. The Joker is a so-called wild card and possesses the function to perfectly disguise itself as one of the other 13 cards, down to its functions. There's no time limit to this function and it's possible to use it as many times as the owner likes, but once it's used, you can't change it for an hour. Furthermore, connecting this PDA to your caller will not activate the, the bomb function or release the caller. Also, if a person's, if a player's release condition involves collecting or destroying PDAs, your PDAs won't count as one of them. Five, there are forbidden areas. If you enter one, the caller will warn you. If you ignore it, they'll detonate. Wow. Also, from the second day onwards, each floor, starting with the first, will gradually become forbidden areas one after another. At the very end, this entire place will become a, a forbidden area. Six players who survive for 73 hours will be declared the winner and will have a, a prize of 1 billion yen split among them, uh, equally among them. Seven, some sections are non-combat non areas. If anyone not launched an attack while in one of them, their collar will explode. Eight, all areas are non-combat are non areas for the first six hours of the game. The only times you can attack them are, are accidentally or in legitimate self-defense. Nine, there are exactly 13 cards. Release conditions by numbers. A. Kill the owner of the queen PDA. The way you do it is the way the way you do so is irre irrelevant. Two. Destroy the Joker PDA. If the PDA's function is used within one meter of the Joker PDA, the Joker PDA camouflage feature will be de deactivated. It will have to be reset manually. Three. Kill at least three players. This does not include death via the caller detonation function. Four. Acquire three callers, not including your own. The way you do so is irrelevant. Be heading to take the caller's fine, and you can take the caller of those who have fulfilled their release conditions. Five pass through all 24 checkpoints in this facility. They'll appear on the map of, of this PA alone. Six, the Joker camouflage feature is used at least five times. You don't need to be the one who used it, nor be near it when it's used. Seven, count all players after the initial six hours of the game. You're exempt from encountering any dead players. Eight, destroy five PDAs within five meters of this PDA. The way you do so doesn't matter. If you destroy six or more, your caller will detonate. Wait, couldn't they just all meet up together and they, and they 
Oh, only, only one person could do that. Nine, all players except you and except for you die. The way this happens is irrelevant. Ten, detonate five callers. The fifth caller must be de detonated before the 71st hour mark. J, spend no more, spend no less than 24 hours with another person after the start of the game. That that player must be alive at the 71 hour mark. K, Q, survive for 71 hours. K, collect five more PDAs. So the way you do so is irrelevant. Are they going to tell each other that? I think Mother exchanging comparing rules. Go on, Mother, this. Tezuka immediately shoves his PDA shove into his pocket. Tezuka sneered mockingly at Godo's, Godo's comment. Omedetaiyatsu <laughs> Everyone knew that the callers really did blow up. In other words, if they didn't follow the rules or if three days passed, their lives really would be over. Tezuka's comment caused complete turnabout in the room as near. They realize that the people in front of them might become their enemies at some point. And so they spontaneously exchanged glances and began waiting for someone to make the next move. It seemed like it seemed Nagi Sawa still hold, held a grudge against Tezuka for teasing him as he had his PDA and looked away. Rico, who had been quietly thinking to herself up until now, finally spoke up. Rico looked back at Goda, took a deep breath, and then spoke. You mean the Joker? Yes. Tezuka-san's社会的関係以外に、このジョーカーの問題があります。どういうことだ? leaned in closer out of curiosity. Oh, okay, yeah. Everyone felt the room as get even colder. Everyone felt the room as near Tezuka grinned boldly. Shinjiraるのは自分だけ。え、いい言葉だぜ。本来はこうして一緒にいるだけでも危険なはずですが。俺たちがのんきに顔を合わすなんてしていられるのはルール八の六時間制限のおかげか。残りは何時間だ、
Fumika tried to calm Nagasawa down, but he was so agitated that he couldn't be pacified. Even now, he was shooting hateful daggers at Tezuka. So, Gordo, who had been quiet for a while, suddenly muttered this. Perhaps because it caught their interest, everyone looked at her, thinks that the violent atmosphere calmed down slightly. How did it end? Tired of that movie appeared in Sochi's mind. In the past, he had gone to see it with his girlfriend, but the extreme content didn't sell well with her, so he ended up leaving halfway through. Koda then leaned against the wall as if she had collapsed again into it. Koda. Fumuka, who had been casually fiddling with her collar up until this point, until that point, promptly took her hand off it. It wasn't just Fumuka, everyone shared the same fear. In that movie, if you broke one of the rules or tried to remove the call your collar, it would detonate. Given the situation they're currently in, everyone could only think that the same thing would happen if they just did, if they did just that. After seeing that course, er, corpse earlier, no one felt like breaking any of the rules. And this is where I'll be stopping off for today. Thank you for watching this part of Killer Queen. Have a great day, night, wherever you are. And please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And please comment if you found anything interesting in the video.